Okay, so in here we, um, in this case, we have a full anti-dilution provision. So we have anti-dilution provision with no minimum price. So some of the information that we gathered this all from table three. So this is from the original, um, from the last round of financing. So in table three, we just take a quick look. Um, GBA invested fifty, uh, invested seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. In exchange, they get fifty thousand shares. So that's the important information we want to take in. So GBA invested, uh, invested seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, and they receive. 50,000 shares. The founders, uh, this is Janet and Steven, they have a total of 50,000 shares as well. So remember, they have uh, Janet has 40,000 shares and Steven has 10,000 shares. So altogether, Janet and Steven have 50,000 shares. This is a negotiated term. Uh, the new investor, Pear Tree Partners, wants $2 million in exchange for two thirds of the firm. So the first thing we're going to compute is uh, to look at the, um, the valuation as though there is no anti-dilution provision. So if there is no anti-dilution uh, provision, the post round A valuation is, again, you have the formula here, amount cash needed divided by the percentage ownership. So that's a $3 million. And we look at what the post round day total equity for the entrepreneurs would be. So the formula here says that we will take the post round A valuation, which is $3 million, minus the cash that they raise, minus the um, investment by GBA. So in other words, um, they are going to give GBA the entire $750,000 because there is no uh, floor prices. So the equity for the entrepreneur is equal to the $3 million minus the cash raise minus GBA's original investment. So the equity for the entrepreneurs will go down to $250,000. Now we can compute the diluted price. So the diluted price is the equity for the entrepreneurs, so $250,000 divided by the shares owned by the entrepreneur. So divided by 50,000. So the diluted market value is $5 per share. And this, the diluted market value per share is the value that you use to determine the number of shares to be issued. Because now GBA has an anti-dilution provision. So when you issue shares, you are not issuing shares just to pair tree. You are issuing additional new shares to GBA to protect the original investment of $750,000. So the new shares to pair tree is the same. We take the uh, amount of cash that you're raising, the $2 million, divided by the market share, or the market value per share. So you issue 400,000 shares to pair tree. For GBA, remember you're going to hold them harmless, which means that the total number of shares they will own will reflect the seven hundred fifty thousand dollars that they that they invested. So that's equal to your original investment. So the original investment is seven hundred fifty thousand dollars divided by the diluted market value. So diluted market value is five dollars. So they should have one hundred fifty thousand shares total but they already have 50,000 shares. So the number of new shares, again, you can use the formula, is equal to the total shares, so 150,000 shares, minus the 50,000 shares that they already were issued. So you have to give them an additional 100,000 shares. So this is what we will need to bring in down to our um, caps table. So first of all, the existing shares outstanding, that's from table three, we have done that before. So this has not changed. This is the same as before. But now GBH will be given another 100,000 shares and Pear Tree Partners will be given 400,000 shares. So we can look at what our caps table looks like.
Now, as expected, again, as we have more entries. You want to make sure that we everything adds up to one. So Janet and Stephen shares reduced dramatically. And if you add up GBH, if you add up the 8%, because both of these are by GBA, if you add these two up, you'll find that they still own 25% of the firm. So their position did not change um, even from an up round. So their position remains half of their original ownership. So let's take a look at the loss, uh, who bears the losses in this particular down round. So the post money valuation is the $2 million divided by 66%. And the pre-money valuation is three million minus uh, two million. So this remains the same as the other down round, but the law situation down here would be very different. So we'll take the shares times the new market value per share minus the old shares times the old market value per share. So for Janet, she lost $400,000. And for Steven, he lost $100,000. For GBA, we can't just copy that because GBA actually now has two outstanding shares. They have 50 shares, 50,000 shares plus 100,000 new shares at $5 versus before they have 50,000 shares at $15. Now it should not come as a surprise that this is zero. Um, so this is a format um, issue. So you can change that to general. And the total change in value is also $500,000. So compared to the last down round, uh, a situation where there is no anti-dilution provision, uh, Janet, Stephen, and GBA all lost money. And altogether, they lost $500,000. With the full anti-dilution provision, Janet and Stephen lost money, but GBA is made harmless. And altogether, they still lost $500,000, but all the losses are borne by Janet and Stephen. Now, that obviously is not very appealing to the founders. So in the negotiation, they may counter the anti-dilution provision with a fraud price. So in this last scenario, we're going to look at um, a situation where there is a down round and there is an anti-dilution provision, but there is also a minimum fraud price of $8. So what that means is if the Diluted price goes below $8, then both parties will bear some of the losses. The calculation in the first part is very similar. So to start with, again, we need to find out what the um, post money valuation is, which is $2 million divided by 6.6. .6. So the company is worth $3 million. We have to figure out what's the maximum total shares that GBA can can get. So this is contingent upon the minimum price. So the maximum shares that GBA can get is equal to the original investment of $750,000 divided by the minimum price. So the maximum shares that they can have total, including the 50,000 shares that they already have, is $93,750, given the minimum price. Um, next, let's figure out the new shares that is going to be given to Pear Tree. Now, this one did not, um, is, depends on the existing shares by the entrepreneur. So it's a long formula. This is, depend, this is uh, again, in your textbook plus the maximum total shares to GBA times the new shares wanted divided by one minus the new, percent, or the new percentage wanted um, time divided by one minus the new percentage wanted. 
So let's put that into place. So this is equal to the maximum number of shares. So we have this plus the existing shares. So existing share by entrepreneur is 50,000 times the percentage that pair tree wants divided by one minus the percentage that pair tree wants. So this is the percentage, uh, this is the number of shares that will be given to the new investor. So that will be pair tree. Now we know the number of shares that will be given to them. We will take the new market. The new market value is the $2 million divided by the number of shares that we're issuing them. So that's equal to $6.96. And the new shares to GBA will be equal to the maximum new shares. So in here minus the existing shares, so $50,000. So see what happened if the new price is higher, or the, the new market value is higher than the minimum price, then this just will not get triggered. If the new price market value is higher than the minimum price, then the calculation will be the same as though it is in a, um, in a down round with no minimum price. So now we have all the information we need to create the caps table. So again, the first three rows is what uh, is the existing information from table three. So Janet has 10, uh, 40,000 shares, Stephen has 10, and GBA has 50,000. The new shares that they're being issued to GBA is 43,750. To pair tree, is 90, uh, pear tree is 287,500 shares. So the total number of shares is 431,000 shares. And we can compute the caps table. And once again, check to make sure that they are at up to one. 100% ownership. So let's take a look at under this new arrangement, of course, um, GBA owns a slightly less percentage. Remember with no minimum four prices, GBA will own 25% of the firm. With a minimum four price, they only own 21.74%. So let's take a look at the gain and losses from each partner. So again, the first one is relatively straightforward. Post money valuation is $2 million divided by 66.67%. And P money valuation is 3 million minus cash raise, which is $2 million. The change in value is equal to the number of new shares times the new price. So the new price is $6.96 minus, again, go back to table three. Table three is 40,000 shares at $15 per share. So both J J Janet and Steven lost money. Now let's take a look at GBA. So again, GBA is slightly different. They started with 50,000 shares, plus they get an additional 43,750 shares at $6.96 uh, before they have 50,000 shares at $15 per share. Okay. So notice that GBA also lost money. Let's add up their total losses. The total losses also is $50,000. And that's not surprising because in all three cases of down round, pear tree demands the same thing. $2 million for two thirds of the firm with a post money valuation of 3 million and a pre money valuation of 1 million. So the company went from one and a half million to 1 million. The difference is who bears the losses. When there's no anti dilution provision, everybody bears the losses in proportion to their ownership. So it's 40%, 10%, 50%. So 40% of $500,000 is 200, 10% is 50, and 50% 50 is 250. So if there's no anti dilution provision, the $500,000 in losses are spread proportionally. 
when there is a full anti-dilution pr provision and there's no minimum price, the founder Janet and Stephen bear all the losses and GBA was whole harmless. In the case with a minimum price, the founders bear the majority of the losses, but because the new market price 696 is less than the minimum price of $8, GBA also lost money. Okay. This concludes the discussion on pre and post money valuation.